Now, 12 months later, that prototype is a reality. And I think the fact that Leap Air has managed to launch such an important new product in the midst of a global pandemic is, is probably to their huge credit. Uh, but I will warn you, I am a bit biased. Um, as a journalist, I'm expected to be objective and unbiased, but there are some brands for which I just have a greater than usual respect, and Leap Air happens to be one of those brands. So to keep me in check and to ensure that I don't get too carried away with my own enthusiasm, uh, I'm delighted that I'm going to be joined on tonight's show by my co-host, and good friend Peter Haddock. Good evening, Peter. That was seamless. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely brilliant as well. I love that. You know, uh, the, the actual videos showing there. Mark, I love the fact that they crashed it as well, which is brilliant. I mean, it, it, shows, it certainly shows they're testing it properly, doesn't it? Yeah, and what confidence does that yeah. show everybody? Uh, they, they've got in that machine. Uh, obviously, Leap here has a, a, an in, incredible pedigree in the mining sector with its larger rigid trucks. That new model, based purely on the video that we've seen there, it really looks like it's building on that heritage, doesn't it? Yeah, I think what's really important about this uh, model is actually what they're doing here is they are completing their fleet mix again. You know, for me, in this industry, particularly in the, in the ADT space, People are looking at how you can put together an ADT, uh, an excavator, and a dozer in particular. You know, and I think what's really important for Lee Bear, and they've gone all out with this, is they've recognised that they can do that in the mining sector, and they've been really, really successful in combining everything together. But it's needed to be done in the construction sector, particularly as we have some really, really big infrastructure projects uh, in the UK, um, you know, HS2 being one of them. I mean, the, the arrival of this ADT is, is perfectly timed for that little project that I know you know a lot about is, is HS2. Um, I know you, I mean, you've reported on the fact that it's going to be seeing the, the welcome return of, of scrapers. But I've, I've heard you know, various reports that HS2 through its, its life, you know, through the construction phase, is going to require somewhere between 400 and 700 ADTs. Leap here have, have really pitched up at just the right time, haven't they? Yeah, I think they have. And, you know, and again, you know, this is the within the sort of 30 tonne, 28, 30 tonne class. And, you know, we know that, that perhaps AD, uh, ADTs on HS2 are going to be slightly bigger. But, you know, we, we're always going to have a mix there. And we're always going to have a demand for, for that class. And obviously, they're going to be pushing ahead with the, the other ranges, the, the 40 and the 42 ton, I believe. And I think, you know, it's really, really important that we look at how Lee Bear's coming to market here. I think one of the things that stood out from the video is the company's put a lot of thought into the machine's driving capability, not surprisingly, given that it is a, a, a moving vehicle. But it, 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 has, it does have a, a lot of ground, ground clearance. It's got 360 horses under the bonnet. It seems to have talked for days. Obviously, ADTs have their their issues in the bad weather, but as we head into the winter months, all of that is going to be absolutely vital to, to, to maintain production, isn't it? It is. And the other thing that I've picked up on, Mark, is the fact that they've got this smart gear selection. Because one of the things that I talk about a lot is fuel. And, and every contractor and every plant hirer is always looking at fuel. But, all, but it's about moving the material in the most cost-effective and optimized way. So with their smart gear selection that they brought in with this ADT, you're actually getting the machine that's automatically changing gears so that that fuel consumption is reduced and the machine operation is optimized. So it's basics. Uh, you know, from the operator's point of view as well, I think one of the, the critical things I see, and you, you just look at the machine, there's a big slope uh, down from the where the engine is placed in. That's visibility. That's much, much better visibility that they're giving to the operator. And, and I can see, you know, there's a great impact that that's going to have for the operator overall. One of the things that you've just mentioned there is, is automatic gear changes, which kind of brings us nicely onto um, the operator himself or herself. Um, operator comfort, I think, is, is always important, you know, regardless of the machine. But I, I think even more so in an ADT because, you, you know, you are constantly on the move and, and, you know, you are one of the prime movers on a site, aren't you? 
Yeah, I mean, look, come on, your tap testing facility is brilliant. I mean, you look at it going like this, you know, you, you can imagine you're like in a washing machine if you're in that ADT, but actually the driver is in that comfort, you know. So, again, what they've done is they've they've got the, the sort of same sort of logic in, in what they've been doing in their excavators and, and in their mining machines. And, and so it's, it's all about being ergonomic. It's all about having that really nice visible area and so as you sit back in the machine and you look at those sort of pictures that I've, I've looked into you've got that visibility you're not you know straining you're not doing this there's a really really nice tablet system there um, that's in the operator's viewpoint that sees the rear as well and you know there's, there's all of that sort of really nice calming spacious cab. The part that really caught my eye, I think, is, that, is the fact that the machine actually performs its own pre-start checks and then reports its findings to the operator. That, that's another great leap forward, isn't it? Right. Uh, this is, this is again, this is super clever, Mark, right? Because what, what do we need to do? We need to make everything easy and simple for the operator, you know, and, and ADTs are one of those machines that are, are, are a progression machine for the operator. So you're going to get maybe younger operators coming in to, 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 to sort of cut their teeth on ADTs. And because everything's got so complex in how you can operate these things. You've got this mode, that mode. There's this thing that goes beep. There's that thing that goes beep. There's a monitor here. There's, you know, there's so much that a machine can tell you that actually, let's think about the basic, yeah? So the pre-start check, this is what we've got. We've got a, oh guys, we're, we've got a hazard on this or the, there's a potential issue here, you know, that we want to let you know about. Well, that's just great. Because the person gets in there, they can have a look at that before they even start their day. They can go, right, I'm go I've got to go and sort that out. Peter, it's been a pleasure as always. I really appreciate your insight and your enthusiasm. Uh, I would urge people to go and check out Peter's podcast. Uh, it, it is it's jam-packed with insight. So, Peter, you get back to your evening and I shall see you very, very soon. Thanks very much, Mark. A pleasure to talk to you yet again. Cheers for getting me involved.